welcome to the Engelberg Center. Welcome to NYU. Welcome to New York City. For those of you who are coming in from faraway places, I'm Michael Weinberg. I'm the executive director of the Engelberg Center, and I'm just taking like two minutes, maybe even less, to say we're so thrilled that Creative Commons is here. We're so thrilled that all of you are here to talk about these very important, very timely issues. Um, and for those of you who are not familiar with the Engelberg Center, we are the center here at the law school that focuses on uh, innovation law and policy. It's right on the tin, it's what we do. Uh, we do all sorts of events related to creativity and AI throughout the year. So I hope that for those of you who are already part of the Engelverse, uh, welcome. Many of you I saw last night at a happy hour. For those of you who are new, also welcome. I hope that you have a, I'm sure that you have a fantastic experience today. And I hope that it motivates you to come by to some of our other events, uh, some of our other discussions, because this is one of many important, interesting discussions that are happening, that are happening here in New York, of course, and here at NYU at the Engelberg Center. So with that, I will get out of the way. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. And uh, thanks for inviting us to the Engelverse. I think we're going to take that word up. That's amazing. So my name is Catherine Styler. I'm the CEO and President of Creative Commons. I am just welcoming you all this morning, thanking you all for being here, thanking our sponsors, Michael Engelberg Centre, Aiken Gump and Morrison Forrester for all of that support. And I think today's discussion is such an important contribution to uh, informing and giving us food for thought. And I know that many of you here are so expert in what you do, and so that expertise and that knowledge sharing, because Creative Commons is all about sharing, and no knowledge comes from nowhere. All knowledge is built on all other knowledge. All creativity is built on other creativity. And so it's so impactful what you're about to do today. So without much further ado, I'm going to hand over to Brigitte, who's going to lead of what you're doing. So thank you so much for being here. Over to you, Brigitte. Thanks so much. Thanks so much, everyone, for being here. Um, so just as a reminder, for those of you who do not know Creative Commons all that well, we are the organization behind the Creative Commons licenses and tools that have been around for over 20 years now, and uh, we aim to promote uh, in building a global um, commons of knowledge and culture. Uh, so like I said, we're about two decades old, and just a few years ago we embarked on a new strategy, and the overarching theme of that strategy is better sharing. So we came to the realization that promoting sharing for the sake of sharing was kind of lacking a dimension of ethics, of purpose, of a grander goal to achieve. So that's why better sharing became our new motto. What does it mean? It means sharing that is, that is fair, that is just, that is inclusive, that is equitable, that is sustainable, and that is reciprocal. That we all realize that we all have a stake in our shared global commons. And lately we've been considering generative AI, especially the interplay between generative AI and uh, how it impacts our mission and our community. I think, well, I should say that AI is probably a shorthand for m many different types of technology, so bear with me as we all uh, use that term in maybe improper ways. Um, but it is the most disruptive set of technologies to have happened in the last three decades, right, since the internet came about um, in the 90s. And for us, this really triggers hard questions. Um, it triggers questions around copyright because of the way that it enhances and uses creativity because it impacts our licenses, which are built on top of the copyright system. It also impacts our values of openness, of collaboration, and how we all contribute to sustaining a thriving commons of culture and knowledge. What it does is that it brings the freedom to share, the choice to share, into stark, renewed focus. And so AI at this stage calls for a lot of optimism, right? Um, it can help supportive, uh, sorry, it can support creators like never before. Uh, it really opens fresh opportunities for, um, you know, supercharged, collaborative creativity, um, new art forms that really unlock 
um, and push uh, creative boundaries. It can also help cultural heritage institutions like libraries, museums, and archives to really unlock unimaginable amounts of new knowledge around their collections. At the same time, um, also AI may be a cause for concern. And a lot of that concern actually arises from realities that are beyond copyright and the scope of our licenses. But they're likely to have major societal impacts. So for example, what about artist remuneration and labor issues or concerns around market concentration and a loss of equilibrium between exploration of the commons and exploitation of the commons? Maybe the per perpetuation or even the intensification of bias and inequalities and harms that disproportionately uh, harm a marginalized community. And this will have an impact on whether people want to share into the commons, have the freedom to share into the commons. And these are the questions that we're grappling with. Um, I guess because one of our founding uh, values is informed intentions, we don't want to rush to solutions. We want to get all the information we need to make decisions with an intention, with a purpose, knowing about the consequences of everything that we will do. So for example, we're looking at issues like what would a consent mechanism look like? How do we remunerate creators and ensure that people get credit for their work? How can we you know, grow and sustain the commons in the public interest? How do we ensure that AI is used to democratize access to knowledge? How do we ensure that unheard voices are being raised, are being listened to, are being amplified, are being brought to the fore? And how can AI's promises be fulfilled, but its perils averted? And maybe the main question, the one that brings us all together today is, how can we define solutions together that you know, enshrine better sharing, the better sharing ethos at the heart of Creative Commons, enable people to participate in a positive creativity cycle? So this symposium comes within the scope of large consultations that we've been having in the past few months. It's one stop on the, our journey. Um, but I hope that um, we will hear from this symposium diverse views that will contribute to informing our mission and guiding us in fulfilling that. So far, the consultations have revealed a really wide <laughs> range of views, um, but we wanna make sure that we engage in global inclusive conversation. So it's very important for us that many diverse views be represented and be part of this conversation. So we're very fortunate to be among experts today. Uh, they're from, they come from various fields. They're, um, they're lawyers, they're cultural heritage experts, they're artists, they're technologists. All of you come together um, to help us answer the, these questions and ensure that we at Creative Commons can continue to be the responsible stewards for our licenses and that we can usher our community through this very disruptive process. So we have the seven panels uh, in our program today. You'll, uh, you'll have seen the program uh, on your tables. They will tackle all of these uh, urgent issues and I'm certain that you know, these will trigger really rich conversations as we try to navigate these uh, uncharted waters. Um, I want to thank again our sponsors uh, and Engel for particularly for hosting us today. Um, without further ado, I'd like to wish everyone a very productive mm -hmm. and engaging symposium. Thank you.